Hey guys, we are pretty much officially done with sig figs, so no more notes and stuff like that over them in class. You will still have homework periodically where you'll have to use sig figs, you will still use sig figs in lab and stuff like that, but I'm not giving you any more notes or, you know, practice over it in class. We're moving on to a new topic, and this topic is called intensive and extensive properties. Go ahead and get out those notes, and um, let's go. All substances have properties, and properties are kind of like characteristics. They're things that describe that particular substance. So they're chemical properties and they're physical properties. Today we're going to talk about the physical properties and how we can figure out what those are. So the physical properties of a substance are their characteristics that we can use to describe it. So what it looks like, what color it is maybe even how it feels, stuff like that. So those would be physical properties. Again, they are the characteristics of a substance that can be used to describe the substance. So you are copying all of this. Everything highlighted in yellow is stuff that you need to write down. There are two kinds of physical properties. There are extensive properties and intensive properties. Extensive properties are all related to the size or the amount of your sample, so how much of it you have. Again, extensive properties all deal with the size or the amount, pretty much how much of a sample you have. Whereas intensive properties have nothing to do with the size or, or the amount, so they're not related to size or amount. So again, you're copying down what's highlighted in yellow, it's the part that I'm circling with my laser. So there are three kinds of extensive properties, and again, if they're extensive, they are related to how big or small that sample is, they're related to its size. The first kind is called mass, and mass is not really a weight. Weight only depends on gravity. So mass is really how much matter is it an object or a substance. So when you put something on a scale, you're not really getting the weight of it, that's what we call it because we live on Earth and there's gravity. What you're really getting is how much matter is in that object or in that substance. So the bigger the substance, the larger the substance, the more matter it has. Okay, so mass is going to be an extensive property because it is related to size and to amount. The next kind of extensive property is volume. And volume is the amount of space that an object or a sample takes up or occupies. So again, volume is our next extensive property and it is the amount of space or yeah, sorry, the amount of space that a sample occupies or takes up. Again, if you have a small amount of sample, like a small amount of liquid, it takes up less space. If you have a lot more liquid, it takes up more space. So it is related to size, which is why volume is extensive. The last kind of extensive proper, at least the main of the main three that we've talked about, is length. And length is just a measurement of how long something is. So 5 centimeters, 25 feet, whatever. Please note that width and height are also just types of length. We've just changed the orientation or you know how we're measuring them. So again, length is simply how long a sample is. It's related to size, so it is extensive. So what we just went over were the three primary extensive properties. And again, they are mass, volume, and length. What we are about to go over are what we call secondary extensive properties. So I want you to learn these, but it'll make more sense later on in the year when we actually do more work with some of these topics. So the first kind of secondary extensive property is the number of moles in a sample. This is again related to the amount of matter, so it's related to size. That's why it is an extensive property. So again, number of moles is one of our secondary extensive properties. The 
third kind, sorry, the second kind of secondary extensive property is the amount of energy in a sample. So as you know, if something's moving, it has kinetic energy. If it's just standing still, it has potential energy. But the bigger you are, the more energy you tend to have. So energy is related to size, which makes it an extensive property. The last kind of secondary extensive property is the number of particles in a sample. This is related to grams, which is a measurement for mass, and it's also related to moles, so how much of something we have. So that's why it is an extensive property. The number of particles is related to the size or the amount of the sample. The larger your sample, the more particles it has. The smaller your sample, the less particles it has. So you can see some examples that I have up here on the screen. Okay, so the science teachers in the district came up with a little acronym to get you to remember the extensive properties, and we really do want you to memorize these because it's a smaller list, it's a smaller amount. And the acronym is MLV MEN, and we've chosen to make these kind of like superheroes. So M stands for mass, V for volume, L for length, M for moles, E for energy, and N for number of particles. So if you will go ahead and write down what this acronym states in that gray box. And then there's a question that says, what type of properties do the MVL men represent? They represent extensive properties, all of which relate to size and mass, size and amount. Now we're done with all of the extensive properties. Again, the extensive properties are the ones that are related to size and amount. These are called intensive properties, the ones that we're about to talk about, and they are not related to the size of a sample, have nothing to do with how much of the sample you have or how big of the sample or how big a piece of the sample you have. Because this list is longer, I want you to really remember the extensive properties list and then just kind of be able to identify what some of these key intensive properties are. So here are some examples of intensive properties. Color, the state of matter, so if it is a solid, liquid, or gas, and then it's density. So again, color, state of matter, and density would all be examples of intensive properties. When we think about density, and we, we calculated density in one of the labs we did last week. We know that density is mass divided by volume. So you're probably thinking, well, that has to do with size. So shouldn't density be extensive? Well, sorry. Well, density is a relationship between mass and volume. It depends on both of them. Okay, so that makes it independent. That's why it is not an intensive property. So to give you an example of what I mean, look at this picture that I have up here on the screen. You probably would agree with me that all of these little samples are different sizes, right? So it would, it would make sense if we thought this one had the least amount of density, this one had the most density, and this one was kind of in the middle. If you look at the mass, the mass is different for all three of them, just like we expect. If you look at the volume, the volume is different for all three of them, like we expect. But when we do the calculation, when we take mass and divide it by volume, look at the density. The density is the same for all three of these samples. So this just shows us that we could have different size, sized particles or different sized samples that have different volumes, but they may have the same density. So that's why density is intensive. It is independent of mass and volume. Yep, go ahead and write that down. So you're writing down, because the relationship between mass and volume means that density is independent of both. So the part that's highlighted in yellow, that's what you're writing down. Another example of an intensive property is temperature, so how hot or how cold something is. And this is because 
The temperature of a sample depends on its surroundings. It has nothing to do with its size. So if it is someplace cold, the sample is going to be cold. If it is someplace warm, the sample is going to be warm. So temperature is an intensive property because temperature of something depends on its surroundings. Okay, so again, you're taking down what is highlighted in yellow. Okay, now there are some elements like copper and aluminum and a few other types of metals that we can change their appearance or their shape. And there are two special words that we always use, the words ductile and the words malleable. And there is a place for you to write definitions for both of them. So let's start with ductile. Ductile is what we call a substance that can be drawn out into like a wire-like shape. So if you look at this top picture here, see how it looks all kind of ribbony and wiry-like? That would be ductile. So when a substance can be drawn out, especially into wires, it is called ductile. So please write that down. Okay, another thing that we can do to change the shape is to make it what we call malleable. So when a substance can be bent and flattened, almost like a sheet, it is called malleable. When a substance can be bent and flattened, especially into a thin sheet, it is called malleable. So if you look at this picture, see how we have what looks almost like aluminum foil? Think of how aluminum foil comes on a roll and you can pull it out into sheets. That is an example of being malleable. And again, these are two more intensive properties. Another kind of intensive property is magnetism. So we are all familiar with magnets. We probably played with them, you know, in class or when you were little or whatever. There are some elements that are attracted to magnets, so you can use a magnet to pick them up. And there are some elements that can be made into magnets for themselves. Being able to be made into a magnet has nothing to do with your size. Either you can be a magnet or you cannot be a magnet. So magnetism is another example of an intensive property. It does not matter what size the pieces of magnetic metal are. They're just either drawn to the magnet or they're not. So size has nothing to do with it. So again, what's highlighted in yellow, that's what you're writing down for me. There are three special elements on the periodic table. Their names are iron, cobalt, and nickel. And they are what we call ferromagnetic. Okay, so again, iron, cobalt, and nickel are elements that are ferromagnetic. Ferromagnetic just means that they are attracted to magnets and they can be turned into magnets as well. These three elements have a special name. They are known as the iron triad. So again, iron, cobalt, and nickel are ferromagnetic. That means that they are attracted to magnets and they can be turned into magnets. And together, all three of them are known as the iron triad. Okay, so this last slide we're going to do, you should have some extra paper on the bottom of your sheet that doesn't have anything in it. If you would just go ahead and make like a T-chart and put intensive on one side and put extensive on the other side, we're going to do this part together. So I'm going to switch to my pen and switch hopefully to a color that you can see. And we're going to decide where these go. So again, does it relate to size or to size, sorry, does it relate to size? or does it not relate to size? That's what we're thinking about. So color will be intensive. Ooh, I, can't, I don't write well on this, hold on. Okay, let's try this again. So color would be intensive. So it goes on that side because it has nothing to do with size. Odor is what something smells like, so that's also gonna be intensive.
Melting point has to do with temperature. So we're going to put that over here. We're just going to abbreviate it MP. What about mass? Does mass have something to do with size? Yes, it does. So we're going to make that extensive and put it over here. Okay, we're going to switch back to red. Boiling point has something to do with temperature, so we're going to put boiling point under intensive. Nothing to do with size. What about volume? Volume deals with how much space something takes up, so that has to do with size. So we're going to put volume over there. You should be copying this down with me. Okay, density was a tricky one, but we said density is independent of size and volume, so mass and volume. We're going to put it over here. Density. Length is definitely size related. So we're going to put length over here. Specific heat. So heat should make you think of temperature. So we are going to put specific heat under intensive. Nothing to do with size. Okay, and then of course we know temperature doesn't have anything to do with size, so we're going to put it here. Temperature, and then there is energy. Energy does deal with size, so we're going to put, whoops, let's change that color. Energy does deal with size, so we're going to put energy over here. And then down at the bottom we have state of matter. That doesn't have to do with size. So we're going to put that one over here. Um, let me erase that a second. So this one, that should be in red. Okay, so state of matter. All right, and there's our list. So go ahead and copy that down on your paper. You should have been doing it with me. Did I miss any? Do we have it all in the right place? Let's check. All right, so we are now done with notes, and I'm going to go ahead and give you further instructions. Right now, let's go ahead and put these notes on the next available right hand page within our journal. So cut them down, glue them, and then we'll move on to something else.